Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of what we are calling the Post Race Podcast uh, with Dylan James GP, myself and James NS. Hello everyone, welcome along. Hello everyone, so we've just watched the race around St. Petersburg, um, which was a fantastic race to watch. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a review, so we're going to go through talking points and then we're going to go through our big race takeaways. In a more relaxed format, normally I sit down, write a script and then kind of read it like a presenter. However, I thought I'd sit down with, with my mate and talk about what I thought about the race since I thought it would be an interesting format. So. Now, should we begin with the start then? Um, obviously, a r- nice rolling start to get us underway. Um, Dylan, what did you make of it? Uh, well, uh, obviously, Will Power on the front row didn't didn't get the best getaway at all, uh, which kind of made the pack a little bit restless in the middle with Grosjean making contact with Power into Turn 1, obviously. Great start from Scott McLaughlin. That's exactly what he wanted to do, you know, lead lead the grid into Turn 1, lead the grid on the exit of Turn 1. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Good start from Rina VK. Very, very clean from everyone, considering it was uh, the season opener, of course. Uh, your thoughts, James? Yeah, obviously, um, maybe some people you could have seen they might have been a little bit rusty but there was not a huge amount of contact no caution came out on lap one um obviously other big notable starts pato award uh, from the eighth row of the grid into top 10 which was really impressive and um you talked about the contact between will power and roman Grosjean. i mean marcus erickson just kind of took advantage going from eighth to fourth or eighth to fifth sorry um with that start as well so i mean some some big gainers and of course scotty mclaughlin that's exactly what you want to do you know, kind of calm your nerves your first pole position and um he obviously capitalized on it on lap one we could play bingo with you james honestly mention 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 marcus erickson I'll, I'll get a point there it was it was a good start it was a good start i'll give that to you um yeah no it was exciting starting to turn one no contact obviously got uh, who was it simon pagino and uh, pato award got very very close in the middle sector i oh, thought there was going to be a collision uh, luckily both drivers managed to make it through uh, so yeah no it was just a bit manic, which is obviously to be expected from the streets of St. Petersburg. Yeah, Simon Pagano was probably the biggest loser at the start. In the Firestone Fast 6 yesterday, qualified in 6th, then he was out of the top 10 by lap 2, I think. So probably the biggest loser off the start. But um, yeah, as you say, some close quarter racing, but remarkably clean. And obviously, speaking speaking of uh, chaos, we can talk about the caution, uh, which was caused by David Malukas in the Dale Coin racing car. Bit, a bit of an odd crash, just just lost it really, uh, understood straight into the wall, clotted the left wall, clotted the right wall, damaged the suspension, you know. It took it took ages to clean up, didn't it, James? Yeah, well, they were saying that the wall was damaged. It took a big hit, as you say, he did just kind of understeer that front left was ripped off. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a rookie this year in the, in, in the IndyCar series and, you know, the rookies will, of course, make their mistakes and uh, maybe this is his, this is his big mistake of the season. So I guess he's might've got that one out the way. Hopefully it doesn't become a recurring theme for him, but yeah, no, it took a long time to clean up and, uh, that really threw the strategy up in the air as well. Um, it was eight laps worth of caution and yeah, strategy kind of straight up in the air because the pit road on lap 27 was packed yeah no i know james i mean scott dixon was in the lead after what had been a a nightmare of a weekend for him up until that point which was a shock and obviously uh this leads us on nicely to the strategy um scott dixon obviously one of the drivers who went for the three stopper we had weird uh, a kind of 50 50 split two stop and three stops uh it seemed that two stop was the way to go today um however some three stoppers did did capitalize on it yeah well st petersburg is a tricky place to pass um the the, the best way you're going to pass is uh is by is by having a, a big tire advantage so that's kind of where the three stop came in but track position looked to be the looked to be the biggest factor today and you saw how difficult it was to get past only the real moves came when people's tires started falling off colton herter and um, Renus VK, the two perhaps biggest losers at the end of the first stint, both just started dropping like stones. Um, VK went from the top five all the way almost down to 11th or 12th. He was really struggling at the end of the first stint. And um, also because of the caution and the strategy, we've got to talk about the pit lane incident that essentially took, well, you're going you're gonna to kill me for saying it, but Marcus Ericsson took him out of contention um, for, well, at least a podium. He was running fourth catching up to Colton Herter to, for third, took him completely out of the race. And, you know, I will say it was his fault. Um, I guess the Husky Chocolate Honda and Chip Ganassi uh, boys didn't quite get the uh, the car back out ahead of Grosjean and Ray Hall sufficiently. Um, he's just trying to light the tyres up. He's almost oversteered straight into Graham Ray Hall. And, you know, on pit road, it is dangerous. So I guess it warranted a drive-through penalty, but it's a disappointing 
um, way for Marcus's season to start, especially because he was looking so good on pace. I mean, I find it ironic that Ericsson has indirectly hit Grosjean already. Um, we can bring back that old meme from 2018. But yeah, no, uh, unlucky for Ericsson. I mean, Grosjean lost out loads in the pits then as well. I was keeping an eye on him and he dropped three or four positions, which wasn't very good. He fell behind Ray Hall and a few other drivers. Uh, but yeah, obviously that caution sh- shook up the grid completely, uh, as as they usually do, um, which again raises more talking points. Something I want to talk about in the future is, should IndyCar ban pitting under caution so that the cautions actually neutralize the race, you know? Many, many talking points. I might make a video on that at some point. Uh, But more happened in this race. Uh, We can get on to Tatiana Calderon's uh, little adventure into the the service road. I'm I'm not sure what happened. We didn't quite see. We just saw her leaving it. I'm assuming that she kind of missed her breaking point uh, and went deep. But obviously, yeah. Tatiana Calderon. She had, she had a good first race actually. I was pretty I was pretty impressed. She was battling Carl Kirkwood and a few other drivers for a s- substantial amount of time. So fair play to Tatiana. Um, and obviously, well, her teammate in Dalton Kelly didn't didn't have the great greatest race either with um, a spin into the another service road and an issue. I can't remember what lap it was on, but yeah, he he went a few laps down in the pits uh, due to an engine problem. So. Not very good for Dalton Kellett. No, it's disappointing as well because Dalton Kellett was almost perhaps one of the bigger shocks in a positive way in qualifying. I mean, you look at how much, um, say, someone like Alexander Rossi struggled. Dalton Kellett very nearly got through in his um, opening sort of qualifying session into the Fast 12. So a more promising weekend from the Canadian. Um, So it kind of unraveled a little bit during the Grand Prix, um, culminating in a spin and an issue. But I guess there's some positive signs for both Calderon and Kellett to work on. And of course, there's going to be Rustinius in the first round of the season, so we can give them that. Yeah, no, so that, that's positive from AJ Foyt. However, we do need to talk about the ending of the race, since it's probably the biggest talking point, uh, because it really, really went down to the right wire between uh, um, Alex Pillow and uh, Scott McLaughlin. So... It all started when Jimmy Johnson, uh, Pelot's teammate, uh, managed to hold, managed to hold up Scott McLaughlin pretty considerably, and obviously no blue flags in IndyCar if the driver hasn't been lapped by the whole field. So Jimmy Johnson was well within his right to hold up uh, Scott McLaughlin so that Alex Pelot could catch him up. So we had five five final laps with both drivers being within a second of each other, within half a second for quite a few laps, and there are a few moments where I thought that Pelot could. Could make the move, but didn't didn't quite get close enough. Um, and towards the end, I think it was final two laps, we had Devlin Di Francesco in um, Andretti Steinbrenner get in the way of both of them. So yeah, you never knew what was going on. Great final five laps. Yeah, and I thought, I guess, really, really well done to Scott McLaughlin to keep his nerve as well um, in you know such a scenario with so much pressure on him to do so. So that was extremely impressive. And I guess Alex Pelot, uh, one of the bigger talking points, of course, is how poor Chip Ganassi looked at the start of this season. First practice session, they were absolutely nowhere. Dixon struggling, you know, Pelot struggling, Ericsson struggling. So for Alex Pelot to come through the field today and, you know, very nearly win the first race like he did last year. And, you know, this is his defence of his crown, um, which we might get on to. But, uh, yeah, I thought, I mean, super final lap. And I guess a great advert for what should be a really exciting IndyCar season for the rest of the year. Yeah, no, exactly. No, I, I, I yeah, it was very, very nerve wracking. Alex Pelot surprised me. He's always, he's always there. He's, he's a driver who wins races by just being there, quiet. You know, he's never, he's never anything flashy. He's, he's never doing anything crazy. He's always just there, and it really works for him, like it did today. He was, I wouldn't have placed him as one of the race contenders, like for the win at all in, like, say, first fifty laps. However, he slowly made his way through, and well. Next thing we know, he's he's attacking McLaughlin for the lead at the end. So yeah, well done to Alex Pelot. He's making a good um, making a good effort towards uh, um, defending his championship. Um, which leads us to our big race takeaways. If you want to go into the first one, James. Yeah. So I mean, I've talked a little bit about Scott McLaughlin already, but our first big race takeaway is Scotty McLaughlin being fast. I think we knew that from his rookie season. But of course, is he a contender in 2021? Um, you know, this is something we're gonna gonna have to talk about because uh, you know, he he will lead the points championship as well. Pole position led the most laps today. Absolutely dominant performance, really. And you know, bar Pelot's big fight towards the end, it never really looked in doubt. And is this going to be a season long 
running theme? Is Scott McLaughlin going to put in a big championship fight? Or might this be perhaps a Colton Herter type performance in 2021 where he was fast? But is it going to be perhaps riddled with mistakes? Is it going to be inconsistent? So, of course, a great start for Scott McLaughlin. But um, we are only at round one. So can't really get too ahead of ourselves. And maybe, you know, the big names um, might be back before we know it. So well done to Scotty McLaughlin. But Dylan, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, well, obviously we saw perhaps the rise of a new contender with uh, the ex-champion uh, with Pelot's title defence. So that was very interesting to see today uh, because, well, I mean, we can infer that there could be some new names on the scene. I don't even know if I put Scott McLaughlin in my top 10 predictions list, you know, since last season. I, don't, I didn't think he was up there with Grosjean, you know, um, because he was, yeah, he got into the top 10 every now and then, but I didn't, I don't believe he was anything overly special. Uh, so it was great to see perhaps a rising contender against uh, the reigning champion, uh, which leads us to Palo's title defense. Like he's, he's, he looks, well, it looks promising. Uh, it looks like he can certainly um, defend his championship uh, with a, with a good P2 in round one. And that's how he won the championship last year. Just consistent results. I mean, even like top fives is all he needs, you know, just a top five every race. And that's, that's going to be looking good for Pelot. Yeah, I think Alex Pelot has obviously shown why he is the champion today. Um, it was composed, it was calm, it was measured, it was impressive, and it was searingly quick. And, you know, on another day, he's coming home with all 50 points um, for the race win. So, yeah, I think Pelot's title defence is a, is, a, is a big talking point here. And, you know, he could easily be one of the contenders come the end of the season. So... That's a, that's, a, that's a supremely important one to think about. I guess the next one we've got to talk about is how the big names maybe fail to fire, you might say. Um, we've talked about the defending champion um, of, already with Alex Pelot, but someone like a Joseph Newgarden, an Alexander Rossi, Will, a Will Power ended up eventually on the podium, but he had a terrible start, which is very un-Will Power-like to do so. And, you know, the, the big names, they didn't really step up this weekend and, you know, allowed a new star to grab all the headlines. So maybe this might be a recurring theme for the full season. You know, we've got some exciting drivers in the field who you might not call the, the big mega stars of IndyCar. Um, so maybe this might be a recurring th theme in 2022. Yeah, it was Joseph Newgarden specifically who uh, I was a little bit disappointed by. Uh, with his result because normally normally he's up there regardless of track regardless of circumstance but he was absolutely nowhere he was only three spots ahead of Callum Eilat for most of the race uh, he was yeah down there with the AJ Foyt guys with the with the rookies and all that it was really really quite surprising so yeah who knows what we can see in the rest of the season we'll see the rookies rising maybe some of the big names falling so yeah no we've, we've got a lot to look forward to in the 2022 IndyCar season. Yeah, just to finish up on the big names, I mean, Alexander Rossi, well out the top 10. New Garden finished 16th. Pagano finished 15th. O'Ward finished 12th. Oh, he did improve, of course, on his starting spot, but he'll still be disappointed with that. Um, Dixon finished a nightmare weekend for Chip Ganassi in 8th. Ericsson finished 9th. So, you know, some really, really big names not really having the best of starts to their season. So, you know, this could be this could be a big this could be a big thing in 2022, um, opening the door for for the new generation. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, and that leads us on uh, to Chip Ganassi, uh, who obviously started the weekend very very poorly. Um, but well, Dixon didn't know what he's doing. Palo wasn't necessarily doing great at the start as well with his accident. Um, and obviously Ericsson was doing great at the start of the race. We know about his um, issue in the pit lane. But yeah, no, Chip Ganassi, it was good to see them uh, get towards the front because I, I was genuinely worried about them uh, before the race today because uh, they didn't look to be on their usual form. It looked like Penske and Andretti uh, were doing much, much better, uh, which is sometimes the case, but, you know, it's it's not usual to see Chip Ganassi struggling. So, yeah, now that it was it was good to see uh, Pelot come through to get second. And finally, um, to finish up, should we do some predictions for the next round? It's at Texas Motor Speedway um, on the 20th of March. And so, Dylan, do you want to do a pole position and then maybe a top three? So, pole position, I'm going to say Pato Award. He's very, very good around his ovals and he won at Texas last year. So that's a good good uh, bit of me like measurement to go off. Um, for the top three, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Scott Dixon from Pato Award from Scott McLaughlin. Some bold, that's a, that's an interesting one. Scotty McLaughlin, obviously he's no slouch around ovals, picked up a podium 
on one, I think, last year. On that, I think it was only podium was at an oval. Maybe I think it was at Texas. Um, someone, someone in the comments will definitely correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's right. So for my pole position, I'm going to say I think it's a Colton Herter for me. Um, I think he'll be on pole. Yeah, I, I, I feel like if Colton Herter is to mount a serious title, to, title challenge this year, he's got to sharpen up on his ovals. So I feel like this could be the season for him. So he's going to be my pole position. And then I have a top three of... I was going to say Scott Dixon as well, but I can't copy you, can I? Um, no, I'll, I'll, I'll have I'll have Pato Award winning the race um, ahead of Alex Pillow in second again, and then uh, Colton Herter in third. Okay, cool. Well, that wraps up our uh, Monday race review. Well, it's going to be Monday when this goes out. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed it. Obviously, a much, much more relaxed approach to a video. I haven't really done this before, so let me know if you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much, James, for uh, coming along. He'll probably be here every week, so get used to his f annoying voice. <laughs> and Marcus Ericsson propaganda. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly, exactly. Right, okay, everyone. Right, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next video, which will probably be a another formal scripted video as per usual so yeah i'll see you all then